What we got here today is another 1970s Martin D18, and we're going to look at how to adjust the relief on a guitar that has a non-adjustable truss rod. Uh, when I say adjust the relief, that's a little bit optimistic. <laughs> what I mean is how do we control the relief or how do we reduce the relief, okay? This guitar has too much relief in the neck. It has a non-adjustable truss rod. So how do we deal with that? Okay, first thing, this is the truss rod we're looking at. This is a square tube hollow truss rod. And these are strong. I mean, you know, you can't bend it. They're hard to bend. You know, you got steel here and here. And it's, they're sturdy. What they do is sometimes they slip in the neck channel here. So they're sitting in a channel in the neck and sometimes they'll slip and creep a little bit. The glue um, will release and the neck will slip a little bit, things like that. But they're, they're pretty decent rods, except for the fact, of course, you can't adjust them. But that's no big deal because you can't adjust anything prior to about 1994. Um, you know, all the pre-wars, all the 50s, 40s, 60s, 70s, non-adjustable truss rods. So it's a very common thing. Um, you got to learn how to deal with this. So the, uh, I've got this guitar prepped already. The frets are already out of it. Uh, the tuners are out and the nuts off. So we're going to actually show you how I do this, how I get less relief out. So the first thing I do to show you how much relief there is, we're going to use a straight edge on the neck. And most of the times I use a string, you know, uh, to, to just quick look at relief. But a straight edge is more accurate. You want to put it about um, 15th foot right here on this so that it's sitting up on the on the body like this you know it doesn't need to be up here because this is going to fall off but it needs to be about right here and you want to see what's going on over here so this length is perfect for this you put it right there and it falls right here on the body so we can see what kind of relief we have here and i'm going to try to get the camera on this okay it, it's it's tricky and it's hard to hold all this and move the guitar around but we're going to give it a shot just bring this over here to the camera and I'm going to move it around a little bit. Hopefully we can see some relief in there. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure it for you. Just to show you how much is in there. This guitar's got quite a bit. Uh, let's start with maybe 18. Uh, right at the 6th fret here. Right there. So I'm just going to take this feeler gauge and I'm going to try to slide it under there. 18 is not going to fit. So that's good. You know, that's not incredibly excessive. <laughs> Let's try 12. Slide it under here. 12 is a little sticky, so I bet we're looking at about 10. Let's try 8. I don't have a 10 on this set. I need to get one to put it in here. So here we are, 6th fret. And when I say 6th fret, I'm not actually measuring on the fret because I haven't cleaned these yet. So there's some junk on here. I'm measuring in between them, about right here. Yeah, 8 goes very easily. Move it back and forth. So I'd say we got 10 thousandths of an inch of neck relief on this, which is not killer, but it's also easily corrected. Okay, so, if you look at this closely, and this is what I was trying to show, you've got a gap in here, and this might show up in the camera. You've got air here, it's sitting up on the fingerboard here, so there's no, there's no gap right there. There's a gap, 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 and then it comes up here to about the first, second fret, and it's touching the fingerboard here again. So, let's take a feel gauge and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's take eight thousandths of an inch again. Set that up there. I'm going to run the gauge over this way this time. And see it's clear. And then right here, it sticks. So right there it sticks and it's clear all the way from here. And it starts sticking. About right here. 
We should okay. So the last inch and a half on either ends of this um, straight edge, right there. So what that tells us. One more thing about straight edges. If you have the frets already on, these are really nice. These are the notched. Stuart McDonald. Oh, it says Stuart McDonald over here too. Okay. But it says Stuart McDonald. Uh, this is a notched straight edge. A guy gave me this. You can put it on here and you can uh, check the relief with all the frets on it. And that's great too. And you can use it as a standard straight edge too. So, again, somebody gave me this. Been really handy. I bought the other ones first. So, okay. What you find out is that most of your relief, most of the, you got a relief like this, and if you will take away just a little bit of fingerboard right up in here, you can take that relief and straighten it out so that you end up with a straighter fingerboard in the midsection of the neck, which is what you want. So I'm going to use a 16-inch sanding call. It's already got the sandpaper on it. I use it for this purpose all the time. Here's a radius gauge. You need to figure out what the radius of your fingerboard is. On a Martin, it's usually 16 or 14. Unless somebody has <laughs> not maintained that radius. Um, I've seen 20-inch radiuses. I've seen 7-inch radiuses. So it's always a good idea to check it first just to see what you got. I like to use the white side because I can see how it fits. And this is a 16 inch, which I already determined. So a 16 inch radius, 16 inch sanding block. I've already got the tuners off. I've got the nut off. And what I'm going to do is take this sanding block. I don't like to sand fingerboards a lot. Okay. Um, I'm only doing this out of necessity. And there's three steps to reducing relief that I use. Number one is to shape the fingerboard, which I'm going to do now. And number two is to make sure those frets are tight. And I'll talk about that when we get to the frets. And if you're familiar with the term compression fretting, it's when you put a tang in here that's a little bit wide and you don't force the neck back, but you hold the neck back. So you put some tension on it and you can actually force it back a little bit. But I don't like the word force because that's not really what you're doing. You're really kind of holding it in position. But we can deal with the frets. And once we have the frets in, we can cut a little bit of, we can, we can uh, level them in such a way that we create or we reduce the relief in them. I'll show you that when we get to it. So we can deal with the actual fingerboard. We can deal with the frets. And then we can deal with the truss rod. This is, guitar is going to have to have a neck reset. When I take the neck off, I'm going to take this hollow tube truss rod right here, and I'm going to use a dowel, and I'm going to stick a dowel on there that's coated with epoxy. So I will run some really thin epoxy down this tube, and I will coat the dowel with it, and I'll probably show you this later, but the neck we shed is going to be a couple of weeks down the road. I'd like to go ahead and get this video out, so I'm just going to tell you about it. Okay, let me get a dowel. This is a short version of the dowel that I use. I use the whole thing. So I smear this with epoxy. It makes sense to me. It may not make sense to you until you see it. This is the dowel I use. It is a quarter inch. It's just a straight hardware store dowel. The only purpose for this is really to kill the resonant frequencies of this metal rod. So I coat this with epoxy, put a little epoxy in there, stick that in there, twist it nice and good, get it all gooped up with epoxy, twist it down into there, and then the neck is sitting in the vise. After it all dries, cut that off right there. And now you've got a tube that's stuffed with dowel, and it kills the metal vibration frequencies. It may also strengthen it a little bit, but that's not the main purpose. That's a side purpose. Stuart McDonald sells some carbon fiber rods that they intend for the same purpose, but the problem with the square carbon fiber rods, you can't turn them. So they've got to fit in there, and they don't fit exactly right, or you would never get them in there. So they want you to run a piece of plastic over the top of them, a piece of binding. 
And now you got a piece of binding plastic on top of that, and that's it just doesn't work for me, you know. Um, you can't get the epoxy smeared around because you can't twist it. And I have done probably five of those, and every single one of them, the customer complained of a high pitch ringing noise. So I got the guitar back um, on, on several of them, and I actually got a long quarter inch drill and drilled that carbon fiber out and put a wooden dowel in it, and there went the problem. So I quit using the carbon fiber rods, and I just really doubt that you can strengthen this. That's a strong rod, especially pulling in the direction of the neck like this. You know, like I said before in another video, I'm using a force vector like this, and that's not the way the neck works. The neck works with a pull this direction, so it's a very shallow pull this way. It's strong. These are strong rods. But I will fill it with a dowel and epoxy. And I like the round dowel again because I can twist it. And that smears the epoxy all over the place and makes a good tight thing. Kills that metal resonant frequency. Okay. Three, th three ways I'm going to control the relief, okay? A little bit of shaping on the fingerboard. Not much. I don't want... I don't want to make this fingerboard feel narrow and thinner, but we're going to do a little bit. And I'll show you. It won't take that much. So we're going to work with the fingerboard. We're going to work with the frets. And then we're going to do a little bit of work with the truss rod itself down at the end. Each of these decline in importance. So I don't want to take my brand new fresh frets and knock ten thousandths of, them all, ten thousandths of an inch off in order to create a, um, a, a platform for your strings. Your strings are going to sit on the frets, right? So you can do a lot with the frets themselves to, con to control the effective relief, if you will, the effective relief. I look like, what's his name, you know? But you can control the effective relief using the frets. But I don't like to put brand new fresh frets in and then grind the things into a shape. So I'm going to use a combination of things. So, all right, let's get with it. 16 inch radius block we're going to come up here and all we're going to sand is to maybe the fourth fret here and if you watch this happen you will see that this gets constantly sanded this barely gets sanded because the block just comes up and goes away but this is getting sanded the whole time so that's going to automatically create a curve like this in the thing so we're going to go at it. And I'm just going up to about the, I'm going up to the fifth fret, but I'm just, there's not even any dust in it. Most of my sanding is going to happen to the, to the first three frets. I'm just keeping this nice and firm on there where I can feel it. It's not rocking back and forth. So I'm maintaining a nice 16 inch radius. And I might even back up here and work on just the first two frets a little bit, you know? Like this. Okay, let's see what we got. And there's some dust. That's good. Vacuum up that dust. Let's put this back on here and see how we're doing. And I'm looking again at the gap right here. I've got a gap now clear up to the first fret. So the only place that this is touching is right here. Right between the nut and the first fret. The rest of it, I've got a gap right there, so I have achieved. So now I'm going to really focus just on the end, and I might even angle my block a little bit like this, so that I just get right up in here. This is why I took the tuners off. Also, I'm holding the block like this with my fingers on the side, and that I'm gliding the headstock right there 
and that way I don't hit the headstock. You could cover that with cardboard if you wanted to, if you weren't confident of your technique. But I've got my fingers right there, and I use them as a depth guide, and I'm okay. Check it. Okay, doing pretty good. I definitely have a curve right here now, but now it's high right here at the first fret. And what we want is we want the center to be the highest point, proud, is what they call it. We want this to be proud and for the fingerboard to actually fall away from your straight edge down here. So we want the reverse of what's happening right now. Right now we've got air in here and it's touching right here. We want the opposite to happen. We want it to be touching up in here, or at least very flat. And we want this to actually be clear. So I gotta keep going a little bit on this. And this time I'm gonna go flat again, just the first three frets. My relief is definitely going down. Um, fingerboard, uh, the straight edge is almost flat on the fingerboard now. So basically the process is just keep doing this until I get it where I want it. And so I'm going to work, cut the video off here, we'll come back to it when I get it right. Okay? It takes, you know, it's a process. I mean, it takes quite a bit of time. So 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, you know, whatever it takes to, to take that down. The key is to just Take sand a little bit, check it. Sand a little bit, check it. On and on and on. It's kind of tedious, so I don't think it needs to be on the video. You've got the idea. We'll come back when I've got Okay, I've been sanding on it for a little bit, and I haven't done all that much. I can still see the divots in here the, um, in the fingerboard that I started with. At the second fret, the divots quite a bit reduced, so I kind of have a feel for how much I sanded off in here. And again, I don't like to sand too much because I don't want to change the feel of the depth of the neck. But this guitar is also getting new frets. The old frets are about 25 thousandths of an inch thick, uh, you know, tall. The new ones are going to be 43. So 20 thousandths of an inch higher. So that means I can take off 20 thousandths of an inch off the fingerboard, put 20 thousandths of an inch taller frets, and the fingerboard's going to feel the same. I got a little bit to work with. So let's take a straight edge. And this time I'm going to slide it up into here to the um, 13th fret, 12th fret. I want to see what the neck is actually doing up in here. And that's the great thing about a straight edge. You can slide it back and forth and read it from this hump to the end. Or you can slide it forward a little bit and see what the actual neck itself is doing. So we're going to start right here. We're going to start where we were and take a look at it. And it's very flat right now. I bet it's about two thousandths of an inch thick uh, of relief right there. Not very much. It's just a tiny sliver of light. As we slide it forward up here to the 13th fret, then I can look at this and I can see that right here I've got a drop off. So the straight edge is sitting flat from here and then right about right here it drops off a little bit. And that's what I want because in under tension that neck is going to come up a little bit more and we're going to end up with a pretty flat neck. Remember we started at 10 thousandths at rest. So when it was strung up it would probably be close to 20 thousandths of an inch which is too much. Um, that's why you put in a little bit of a proudness right here. So the under tension comes up and then you've got about five, less than 10 thousandths of an inch. Um, and when I say less than 10, man, I really want like, like eight. I want from four to eight, something to that range. I want that five thousandths of an inch. I don't want 10 thousandths of an inch. I want it to be less than that. And by less, I mean five thousandths of an inch. That's a good measurement, okay? So at this point, I'm happy with the, with the curvature of the fingerboard and I'm going to go ahead and fret it and we'll come back and I'll show you a trick for that.
Okay, we're back. And last time you get this continuously, but I took a, a break. So we have now sanded the fingerboard to where it has a little bit of a curve to it right here. I fretted. Uh, it's got fresh Evo frets on it, which um, I just I haven't, I haven't, I haven't belted the edges yet. I'll do that after I get the neck off and I can do it all in one swipe off of the guitar. But I've trimmed the edges, so I'm not going to cut my fingers off. So the next trick that we have here to deal with the relief is to work with the frets a little bit. So what I do is take my marker here, purple marker, and I'm going to mark the top of the frets like this. I've talked about this before in other videos too, but this is specifically for dealing with the neck relief. So I want to make sure that this has uh, got its own segment, if you will. Okay, I only have frets up to the um, 14th fret here because I'm going to pull the neck and when I have the neck off, I'll finish up the rest of the frets. This is all I need. So, take my straight edge now and lay it on the frets, on top of the frets. It's almost perfectly dead flat right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate string tension on this and we're going to level it to that simulated string tension this is very much like pre-stressing the neck when we were adjusting the stretch rod um i know from experience that this sandbag this sandbag simulate neck tension and the way i figured that out was to um, measure neck relief in a guitar that was strung up I uh, measure the neck relief, then I uh, slacked the strings off, put the straight edge on there, and added weights on here until I got the same amount of relief again. So what this does, again, is puts tension on this neck. It simulates having the strings tied to the nut, tied to the saddle. It's putting a little bit of a bow in that neck right now. And we're going to level to that. If you do this... Yeah, you definitely see a little bit more relief in there right now. So we're in a, we're going to end up taking a little bit more off of these frets here and these frets here and less off of these. And it's a very small amount, but it'll end up with it being level under tension, which is what you want. Now, again, I never grind frets. I want to just skim this along here and just barely see that color go away. So I'm not putting any tension at all. I'm just, I'm just letting this ride. And that color is going away almost immediately, which means that my fingerboard was nice and flat um, without any waves and dips in it. And I got all my frets seated very nicely with no high frets. Colors gone off the top of all the frets. Just that very light filing right there. It kissed the tops of all the frets. Uh, this was a really good fret job. It didn't take any leveling at all. There's one fret right here that's showing a little bit more filing than the ones next to it. Um, but I touched this one, so I think that one's good. And if I thought that this one was requiring a little too much filing, what I would do is simply get jaws. There's jaws, and I would simply come back in and make sure that fret was pressed. Give it just a little bit more tweaking there. 
come back and hit it again. No, I'm happy with that. I'm getting, I'm getting colored off of all the frets. We're good. Okay, so what I did there, again, I leveled the frets under tension. Now, if I put the straight edge on it, right now, still under tension, it doesn't move. So, ah, very, very small. Let's measure it. And I would expect to see this same relief when the guitar is actually strung up. Because again, I have simulated string tension with the sandbag. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to measure at the sixth fret. And there's six thousandths of an inch. And it is just barely dragging on the ruler. So six thousandths of an inch of relief. Pretty good, you know. Let's try eight. Just see if the eight will go. No. Eight bumps into it. So six thousandths of an inch you believe. Perfect, you know. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. And again, I might have actually... This might be just a little bit more than the string tension is. Um, when I get the... So the strings are going to behave just a little bit differently, but... So I, I expect that's going to be good. That's six thousandths of an inch. Um, looks good. So, well, good. So that's how I control the neck relief on a non-adjustable truss rod. If, for some reason, I actually had to get it down to two thousandths of an inch or something like that, um, what I would do after doing this, and I go, hey, I need a little bit more, a little less relief, I would go ahead and pull one, two, three frets, maybe four. Go ahead and pull them and do a little bit more sanding over to here. Um, you might ask this question if you're paying attention to this. You might ask why I don't sand up here. And I don't sand up here because this is not where the movement is. It's got the heel. It's got the body. And this is not really a rise. Um, people think it's a rise. And you could treat it like a rise. And you could sand this off here. But that's really not where the problem is. The problem is in the relief itself and the dip of the neck. So you take it off of here. And you make that curve like this. Um, and then the curve will go up. And it should meet this. This is not a hump. You know, this doesn't go like this. It's not a hump. So if you treat it like that and sand it down, you're treating the symptoms and not really the cause. The cause is, in fact, too much relief. I'm taking it off of this side of the neck in order to create a curve that would then, a parabolic curve that would then curve back into a straight neck, you see? And so if you go taking it off of here, yeah, you can make it straight from here to here, but it's really, it needs to be dealt with at this end. And that's not to say that sometimes I don't come in here and take, share that just a little bit, but that's not the problem, okay? Sometimes it can be an issue if the fingerboard is not sitting in there straight. On man lens, they tend to get a hump up here for some reason um, because they don't sit on straight a little bit. But but it's rare. I, I just don't I don't address neck relief in this area very much. I address it out here on the shaft of the neck so that it bends up into a straight neck rather than taking this down, you see. That's why I do it that way. Okay? So there we go. After I string this up, uh, watch for a video where I play this guitar and I evaluate it after everything's done. This is a 70s. It's getting everything done to it. It's getting the tuners, um, frets, getting the neck with shafts, getting the scallop, popsicle brace, bridge plate. Bridge plate's already out on this one. Bridge is off. So it's getting the full 70s overhaul. Uh, it's going to be in a video and I will recheck the neck relief then 
and you can we can all see how I did. But that's our idea with neck relief and a non-adjustable trust rod.